Let's see here. Where did I put my keys? Nope. Not in there. Nope. Not in there. No. Oh. Here they are. What the? Ram. That's weird. Huh. I wonder what this does. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the beautiful state of Utah. My name is Jason Kirchie, aka Mr. Swell Runner, and today I've got a really, really sweet surprise for you. <laughs> you may or may not know that I have sold the Forerunner. In three days, by the way, I also bought something else. And today we're gonna do a rig walk around video. It's gonna be short and sweet, but to the point of my brand new, to me, 2017 Ram 2500 Prospector XL conversion build. It's not a serial numbered Prospector XL, to my dismay. But it's mostly the same and better in many ways. So the reason why I bought this and not a Toyota Tundra, it's probably the first question I get asked is I wanted a full-size pickup truck, I wanted a diesel, and Toyota didn't have any one of those things, so here we are. I thought this was like the best solution for what I was trying to look for. And uh, on top of that, I've got 40 inch tires, which is pretty stinking cool. Here's the story behind this. I knew I was gonna be getting rid of the 4Runner at some point. I knew I wasn't gonna keep it forever. It was really nice, by the way, to not feel rushed into selling the 4Runner. And, uh, you know, so I could kind of take my time and find what I was looking for. Uh, I wasn't totally sure what I wanted to do. Uh, I knew that I was pretty sure I wanted a diesel and that I was pretty sure I wanted a full-size pickup truck, primarily because the long-term plans of this to actually have a, a really fairly decent sized camper on the back. I don't know if I'll go as big as four-wheel camper or not, um, but that's kind of the dream. I wanted to have something that was gonna be capable of kind of maintaining relatively decent mileage, gas mileage and efficiency, if that's the right term to use. Uh, whenever I was to do a bigger build like that and diesel was really kind of the best way for me to go. Toyota doesn't have any diesel offerings, not in the States. And so that kind of put Toyota out. Tundra would have been a great pickup truck. I have no doubt, uh, like my 4Runner was, but that's just, it didn't fill the need. I did want to do full size, I know there's a lot of naysayers out there that say full size is not the way to go, it's too big, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. Maybe true. You have no way of knowing without trying it, right? Everything's an experiment, everything's an experiment, and sometimes you just don't know what's gonna work for you until you try it. You can speculate all, the, all you want. So I might get four or five years down the road and go back to something smaller, or maybe I'll stay big, who knows? Uh, as of today, I'm about a week and a half in. I love it so far, haven't really taken it off road yet. So we'll save the long-term impressions for another another day. I've been looking around on the forums, uh, Expo Forum, uh, local KSL, Craigslist, had some searches kind of going, looking around at, you know, kind of used vehicles. I typically will try to buy used. Um, I don't always buy new because typically you can get a better deal on a used vehicle. And I kind of had this uh, thought that I'd have a better uh, chance of finding maybe perhaps a, a built truck uh, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, there's probably $25,000, $30,000 in aftermarket parts on this thing that, uh, you know, if I was to build from scratch, I'd obviously have to pay, you know, retail perhaps, or maybe I'd have some sponsorship, but either way, I'd be starting from scratch. And I kind of didn't really want to do that. And so what I did is I was kind of looking for something pre-built. Um, I was looking around for used Prospector XLs as well and wasn't really finding anything. And then one of my great follower friends from Instagram, sent me a link to this and said, hey, why don't you buy the Expedition One rig? It's been for sale for a while and they probably want to sell it. So I reached out, went and looked at it and really I think it was a match made in heaven. So this is a 2017 Ram 2500. It's got the Cummins 2.7 liter diesel. It does not have the, I don't know how you pronounce it, ASIN transmission, the one that everybody says is the better one. That only comes in the 3500 and up from what I understand. It's not available in this one. So whatever, not towing, not too worried about it. And, uh, 
This particular truck, it was the Laramie. So it's fully decked out. It's got all the bells and whistles. Probably the only thing that it has that I, or doesn't have that I wish it had was radar cruise control. I'm not even sure that it was available in 2017. I know it's available in 2019 and on, but I think I'll survive. This particular one, they have the AV American Expedition Vehicles dual sport suspension lift, which moves the front axle forward a little bit. I don't have all the details on it uh, offhand. I've read up on it, but I don't have that stuff memorized. Uh, it lifts it about, I guess, two and a half, three inches, I believe. And then with the Highmark fender flares from American Expedition Vehicles, AEV, it uh, allows you to fit 40s. These particular tires are Toyo Open Country, um, I think mud train. They are huge. They are massive, 15.5 inches wide. Uh, these wheels are 20 inch wheels from Dropstar. I am definitely planning on changing those. I think those are a little too showy. One of the things that attracted me to this particular vehicle was the fact that it was, it had a lot of stuff on there that I was gonna eventually do anyway. So I do love the AAV front bumper, okay? But I also love the Expedition One front bumper. This is a front bumper that is available for all of their Ram pickup trucks, I believe. Uh, and they've also got a new bumper for the 2018, or think, I'm sorry, 20, maybe it's 2019 and on, anyway, the fifth gen. Uh, and this particular bumper, I think it's a great looking bumper. Super, you know, super functional, obviously, and, uh, you know, serves the purpose, right? This has a huge, I think it's an 18K super winch, if I'm not mistaken. There we are. Uh, this particular super winch was the only one built. It was a prototype and I don't know all the details, but it was a prototype. They never ended up going to manufacture, going to production. And from what I understand, super winch went out of business. Then it was bought by another company and maybe they're bringing it back. I don't have all the details. And then they've got Baja lights in the bumper as the fogs, which aren't really fogs, but they're super awesome. Um, and then you've got a factor 55 flat link, rope guard. I'm not sure exactly what that's called, but it's a Factor 55 doohickey that's awesome. And dark headlight treatment, I think it came with that from the factory, I, I'm not really sure. Um, so yeah, one of the cool things I like about the um, Expedition One bumpers is they do try really hard to make sure that the sensors are able to be integrated and work. And um, I've heard that these sensors can be buggy and they kind of have been a little buggy. I don't know that I really care, have half a mind to just disable them. I never had the sensors in my 4Runner and I felt like I did just fine. Would like to put a camera up front at some point. It's awfully big uh, on the inside. And I know that after driving it for a while, you'll kind of end up kind of getting a feel for where things are and how things are. But right now it just feels pretty big. I'm not used to it, obviously. So these are the air, uh, the, AR, the AEV, American Expedition Vehicle Highmark Fender Flares. And so the thing that's uh, involved with these fender flares, if you wanna put these on your Ram, is you really, you actually have to cut your fender and fit these on. And then these go over it. The thing that I really, 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 really love about these Highmark Fender Flares is the fact that, I mean, quite frankly, there is no aftermarket fender flare that I have seen that kind of doesn't look chintzy, to be honest. And this looks awesome. The AEV designers did an excellent job of, you know, putting together these fender flares and, you know, executing executing on the design, if you will. Um, and of course, they've got a, an interior, you know, fender liner or whatever to protect the goodies. Coming around to the other side here. So this particular truck, in fact, I don't know if all of the Prospector XLs are built this way, but uh, I know that uh, AJ, Photo Runner, his Prospector XL has got the uh, amp research uh, steps that come down. I'm a little iffy on those, to be honest. Uh, I guess we'll have to see how that, how those, uh, how those work out, you know, on the trail, because we're gonna be doing lots of trail time in this rig. And uh, the clearance on the side, I think was almost 24 inches, and the Forerunner on the side was like, 16 or 17 inches so there's a lot more clearance on the side as we come around here you know the aev suspension components uh come with bilstein shocks can't really see it from here can we get it to focus maybe a little bit i'm not gonna stick my camera in there because it's crazy dirty and all that the other thing that was really cool about this particular setup was the fact that it came with a rear bumper. Now that is something that AEV has just released um, for the fifth gen. They're going to be retrofitting it for the fourth gens and back and their metal bumper. It's you saw it at the for my SEMA coverage. It is a great looking bumper, but it doesn't have a swing out. 
And so when you're going with a PXL, Prospector XL, uh, or anything with 40 inch tires, you've got this problem of the spare tire. You gotta put it somewhere. And so the only place to put it is gonna be in the bed, right? Now AEV's got a bed rack um, and they've got that spare tire mounted to that bed rack. But you're taking up, I mean, it's a big tire. You're taking up a lot of space in, in, your, in your bed that you might wanna use for something else. Expedition One, however, has a rear bumper with dual rear, uh, rear swing outs. Uh, and on one of the swing outs, as you can see, obviously, is the, I'm sorry if the lighting is not very good because uh, anyway, it's got the tire on the rear swing out, which is super awesome. Now it's a big tire. <laughs> it's a big, heavy tire. And uh, I could probably get it down from there by myself, but I could not get, if I had to change my tire, I could not get the other one up there by myself. I'd need, I'd need a hand. I mean, it's, it's a big, heavy, heavy tire. Shoot, I don't even know how I'm gonna change a tire by myself on this thing, because it's so big. It's gonna be something I'm gonna have to experiment with, right? Am I right? The other thing that I really like about the Expedition One rear bumper, rear swing out is that, and this is, I believe, this is their latch design on all their bumpers, but there's two, two latches, dual latches. And so you can see these two latches right here. Can you see, is the lighting all right? Those two latches, and the thing that I really, really, really like about this is you can swing one out, and then you can swing the other one out. And one of them will be locked open, and the other one will be locked closed. And so you, you don't have to manage, the point is you don't have to manage both of them at the same time. With my CBI bumper, I had to manage both of them at the same time. I was happy with my CBI bumper, don't get me wrong, but this dual latching system, it's pretty cool. Let me show you. Cool. So the other thing that's super cool is this particular truck came with Expedition One's mule bed rack system. And it's pretty awesome. I mean, it just offers a lot of great storage. I'm thinking that I can do some storage stuff on the inside here as well. Uh, I have to talk to James at Expedition One about it, but I don't see why not. Um, and I've got some ideas for things that I'm gonna do. But the cool thing is, is you've got tons of storage on the outside as well. I've got my crazy beaver shovel up there already. And on the other side, they've got a Max Trax mount, which is super handy. So, and these guys, like, I literally, like, don't leave home without them. The other thing that's cool about this rear swing out, out is they've got these, uh, these jerry cans uh, things, whatever they're called. I don't think they're called jerry cans, but, you know, you could put roto packs up here. Um, the, uh, Expedition One's got their own kind of proprietary packs. Oh, so the other thing that's really cool is they've got uh, the AEV snorkel on here, obviously, you can see. And uh, see, AEV, boom. So this is also one of my favorite things. I don't know that I'll use it yet, but it's there in case I need to. It's this roof rack system. That's my lighting, I'm sorry. This roof rack system right here, it's their Mule Expedition One Mule roof rack system. You got Baja lights here on the side. This is super cool, man. I can put my front runner boxes up there, lash them down. I've got plenty of extra storage. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do about the inside yet, but there's so much storage. There's a huge storage bin down here. I see some people put their Airbnb dual compressors down there. I don't know that I'd wanna put it there, uh, but there's storage underneath this thing, which kind of prevents me from wanting to uh, try to lash stuff down, but I've got some recovery gear uh, back there. Focus, <laughs> golly. You know, but there's, there's just a lot of space. So both of these seats, both the seats go up like this. I thought this was super cool. There's lights everywhere. There's a light right here, lights up there. There's lights down there. There's lights that come down on the ground. So it's really handy to be able to get in and out. There's so much storage. There's just, you know, storage here, storage there. Uh, I need storage for the seat backs. We're working on that. Um, you know, and, and there's actually a really good stereo system in here, like from Alpine, which I don't really listen to the music stuff anymore, but I'm getting old, I listen to like books. But uh, yeah, so, um, the amp steps are great. I do know of some sliders that work with these amp steps for the Ram, which I may, uh, I may try some of those out at some point. You've got more, a lot more storage here, more storage here, just tons and tons and tons of storage. I'm going to get in so this thing stops beeping at us. And so you can see this is going to be something I'm going to deal with the low pressure. Uh, system, you know, wants these tires to be at like 60 PSI, I think, and these particular tires at 60 PSI are not really, it's, I think it's too high. And I'm still messing with that and testing it. There are tons and tons and tons of cool things that you can look at with the computer system. So, for instance, if you look here, 
you can see you've got the uh, digital readout for the speed and then the top right you've got the temperature bottom right you've got the average mpg bottom left hand you can see the range in the top left you can see current mile per, uh, mpg all of those six gauges like temperature and mile per gallon all that stuff that can be customized and changed which i think is super cool you just have a lot of information at your fingertips and i think it's super cool and as you kind of cycle through your menus there's these commercial settings and these commercial settings give you settings for how to control your lights your light switches here and so you have these light switches right down here. You see aux one, two, three, four, five, and the, the the fog lights are hooked up to the to the factory light switch here. And so that's pretty super cool. So it's easy to turn on and off. And then these light switches, these aux switches, the light bar on the top is hooked up, the side lights are hooked up, and then the rear bumper lights are not hooked up, And then, but I'm gonna hook that up. I don't know that I'll have to integrate any other switching system. So I'm super duper stoked about that. Trans temp, I have an, a readout of trans temp, which is super cool. I've got a readout of oil life um, and fuel filter life, which is handy. And then here's something else that it has, and I have no idea anything about it. And that is on, this is on my list to figure out uh, on the ASAP. This is the Edge Performance Products, I believe is who they are. Uh, Edge Performance Products, and I believe it has their mo juice module, which I think, belie I believe it, it's, it's, I don't know if chip tuner is the right word, but it basically enables me to uh, increase uh, I'm, I'm sure just increase the, the, the power by turning up the boost. I'm sure there's uh, programming ECU maps or whatever the terminology is to, uh, you know, maybe make the vehicle more efficient, make it more, you know, have more power, etc. It's on the list to figure out. It's not going to happen today. I am going to attempt to fit this thing with a camera on it. This is a uh, Joby uh, ball head mount. I'm gonna try and mount that right there and be able to fit it right here with a camera on it so that I can articulate a little more. And then I've got this uh, ram mount thing, which is gonna go right here. I honestly can't live without it because that's where I keep my, my phone. So all in all, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I've never really had anything quite like this. It's very different in a lot of ways, but it's also super fun and awesome in a lot of ways. I love trying new things. I'm super duper excited about this. Got a trip coming up here like two weeks from right now. I'm going out with AJ and his Prospector XLs. We're gonna be two big trucks on the same stretch of trails that we did last year in Death Valley. If you haven't checked out AJ's channel, make sure you check his channel out. I've got a link below. He either has by now, by the time you're seeing this, or will soon be releasing a walk around of his truck. And it's gonna be, I guarantee, way better quality than mine. I already know that there's gonna be so many people that are gonna be like, you are stupid because Toyota better and I keyboard commando and Dodge stock good. I don't care, dude. Just like, if you're like super negative, I'm just gonna hide you from the channel because I really just, this is gonna be a blast. It's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. I really do hope everything works out. I am apprehensive on reliability because of what everybody said. But you know, again, um, everything's an experiment. And so far it's been great. So I guess we'll see. But uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share the video with your friends and make sure you like come back and watch more videos and have fun and like say nice things and be a great human. See you later.